Back to the daily grind and y'all know we gotta talk about this, but before we do make sure you hit subscribe if you're new and hit thumbs up if you're not a baby back bagel biting bitch boy cause you know what time it is, it's full time. MMA. I don't know why I felt like I had to start this video off with the sad trombone full time family, but I just feel like I've gotta be the bearer of maybe bad news in this video man. Fabricio Verdum has seems like he may have one foot out the door and that's not good for somebody who's going to be fighting this coming up weekend in the main event of UFC London versus a very um, underrated and probably you, uh, you probably you might not even know Alexander Volkov off the top of your head but I'm telling you right now um, I already changed my prediction earlier like after I did further research on Alexander Volkov he's only 29 years old as a heavyweight He's undefeated in the UFC. He's got wins over Timothy Johnson, Roy Nelson, and Stefan Struve. And um, it, he's also very experienced to be only 29 years old. He's got 29 wins and like six losses. So he's got more wins as a heavyweight than years on this planet. And I know that's the case for quite a few of these guys. You know, heavyweights stick around quite a while as far as their longevity in the sport. You see heavyweights fighting until they're 42, 43, grand, you know, 46, shit like that. But with that being said, Alexander. Alexander Volkov's only 29. Now, Fabricio's 40 years old, and you might say, well, hey, you just pointed out the heavyweights fight a little bit longer, so Fabricio might not have anything to worry about. Well, full-time family, there's just a multitude of things that are leading me to believe that Fabricio Verdun might be taking the L this weekend, as, as the predictions show, because there's multiple things that have been going on. For one, before even this stuff, Fabricio was talking, you know, he had an appearance, I believe, at the, I know Cain Velasquez showed up at the WWE. For recently, Fabricio Verdun was talking about, you know, the uh, opportunity with the WWE. He got his commentating job back, Now I believe he broadcast for the UFC in Spanish. Um, he's talking about wanting to fight on UFC 226 now, which is a little bit looking ahead, you know what I'm saying? If you And what that makes me think of is Donald Cerrone versus Darren Till. Donald Cerrone didn't really know who Darren Till was, had never heard of him, was going to Poland to fight this kid nobody knew, anyone, anytime, anywhere, which is what Fabricio Verdun's been doing lately, just taking short notice fights in overseas, uh, Marcin Tibur, I'll, I'll jump in for Mark, oh, Mark Hunt's out, I'll hop in there and go over to Australia and fight. Oh, Derek Lewis has to pull out of our fight short notice. Fuck it, I'll fight Walt Harris anyone, anywhere, anytime. That's what Fabricio's doing. And now it's looking like the heavyweight division's tied up as far as the title fight's concerned. You got Cormier coming up for a champion versus champion super fight. Granger Singano was getting a title shot. There's talks of John Jones and Brock Lesnar coming back. Um, there's all type of stuff going on in the heavyweight division. So Fabricio Verdum is keeping himself busy fighting a lot of, you know, some of these other ranked heavyweights. Well, Alexander Volkov, to me, you know, in my um, estimation, is on another level than Marcin Tibora and Walt Harris. Walt Harris took the fight on short notice, got submitted in the first round. Marcin Tibora is a top-ranked, you know, heavyweight as far as top 10 is concerned, but Fabricio Verdun still kind of um, looked a little flawless in that performance. You know, over five rounds, he probably won every round, and it was a great performance by Fabricio Verdun. But Alexander Volkov, though, very solid striking. He considers himself to have high jiu-jitsu. If you look at his um, summary on the UFC, he said he's a uh, kickboxer and a striker in jiu-jitsu. So you have to think, what's Fabricio Verdun's path to, you know, how's he going to win this fight? He's probably not going to outstrike Alexander Volkov, to be honest. And, of course, if the fight gets to the mat, Fabricio Verdun might be able to go for a submission. But we've seen Fabricio Verdum not be able to submit some guys, like when he got Alistair Overeem. He had Alistair Overeem hurt and wasn't able to get that submission. So unless Alexander Volkov is just some blue belt rookie on the ground, Fabricio's even going to have to work for a submission. So on top of the fact that Alexander Volkov is a real threat, Fabricio Verdum doesn't have a super, you know, it's not like there's just a clear path to victory for him to win this fight. He's already talking about, you know, the WWE. He said he feels more like a company guy now. He's already talking about his next fight. I just see a whole lot of things. The age, there's a whole lot of things stacking up against Fabricio Verdum, in my estimation, leading into this main event fight versus Alexander Volkov. If Alexander Volkov gets this win, he could become the heavyweight Darren Till. Nobody really knew who he was until he beat, you know, one of those guys that everybody knows. Now you're like, oh, who is this guy? 
I think that, that's gonna this weekend is gonna be Alexander Volkov's coming out moment for the UFC heavyweight division. And after that, Fabricio Verdum could, you know, fight a couple more times. He could go to the WWE. He could fucking just fight again on the Miocic Cormier card if he doesn't, you know, come out too unscathed. That's from, you know, it's not till July 7th, UFC 226. So he's got a little bit of time after this fight. But still, planning ahead is not always the best idea. And I brought up Donald Cerrone because after when he fought Darren Till also, he, you know, he already had another plan, fight planned. He was like, yeah, you know, we're going to fight this guy. And then we've got... You know, we already know what card we want to be on next. I believe it was UFC 219 or something like that. So, um, it didn't end up happening that way for him. So, with that being said, it is what it is. But Fabricio Verdum has said that he feels like a company guy now. If you want to go check out the article, I mean, um, I'll just read it real fast. He said, without a doubt, the business side of my MMA career is very important. I feel like a company guy now. I understand the organization now. For example, Miocic vs. Cormier. I understand why they booked that. It's something the fans welcome. Two champions from two weight classes. I'm looking forward to watching it or commentating. And if I can get a fight on the same card, I'll do that too. You know, it, it's starting to look like it's all about, you know, the business with Fabricio. He's looking like he's ready to start transitioning from being a fighter to being a businessman. You know, got his career, you know, he can work on Fox probably again in the future. He might be able to work. He's already got his commentating gig back. Fucking, he might transition to the WWE. He might, you know, he's doing his thug thistle, but... As far as being a legitimate heavyweight fighter, Fabricio Verdum's one of the greatest heavyweights, maybe greatest fighters of all time, for sure greatest heavyweights of all time. One of the most insane resumes of all fighters you'll ever see. If you go look down Fabricio Verdum's resume, nothing but killers his entire career. I'm talking about the, you know, the Fedors, both, both Fedor brothers, you know, three fights with uh, Alistair O, like Mark Hunt, he's just fought everybody and he's been doing it for a long time. So Fabricio Verdum's a legend and he's looking like he's starting to transition into that Hall of Fame style of career. You know, that that guy that sticks around, he's always he's still always gonna be a part of the sport, but just outside of the actual sport. So, hey, congratulations to Fabricio Verdum on that. It's always good to see somebody, you know, who's got that type of mindset ready to transition whenever that time does come. And you know, but at the same time, we'll see what happens and that he's got to fight. All of that shit that we're thinking about and talking about right now, that's all shit on top of him having to prepare for the Alexander Volkov, who's a fucking killer. So I hope he's still, you know, got it. We'll see what happens this weekend. Can't wait for this main event, UFC London. It's on Fight Pass. Fabricio Verdun versus Alexander Volkov. With all that being said, it is what it is. Let the full-time family know what you think in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell right next to it so you're notified every time I upload a video. I'm out. Da -da 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 -da. It's the motherfucking D-O-Double-G.